The Green Room at Lift Vancouver is brought to you by Cloud9 Cannabis Coaching. If you have suffered from anxiety, chronic pain, or depression, like I have, you know full well how debilitating it can be. Brady Sparrow, founder of Cloud9 Coaching, specializes in microdosing cannabis to help her clients lead more balanced lives. Whether you've been using cannabis your entire adult life or just now learning about this incredible plant, Brady's simple microdosing guide will help you find the perfect balance in just one month. Brady is about to host her first 30-day challenge called Find Your Cloud9 in 30 Dope Days. I'm doing it and you should too. So why not go over to cloud9coaching.com and join us. Be sure to use coupon code Jackie, J-A-C-Q-U-I, for a special green room discount. What's going on, everybody? It's Les from Cannabis Wiki, here with Gerald Major, Jackie Childs. Hey, guys. And we got a special guest. Her, from <laughs> him, Vantage, Vantage Hemp Co. <laughs> Vantage Hemp Co. Sir, what's happening? Welcome to the green room. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. And what do you do? Who are you? What are you here with? Who well, are you here with? We're at Lyft in Vancouver <laughs> with Harv. Tell us about your Lyft experience. Well, Lyft experience is very, very good. I, I'm actually one of the earlier investors in Lyft. So this is kind of how I got in the cannabis space was through knowing Tyler, the uh, founder. And it's amazing to see what this has become from a blog that he started five years ago. And okay. uh, over the last few years, obviously, uh, just learning more about the cannabis space and so forth and then the Vantage Hemp opportunity has been the last year where we've been really focused on the... Uh, what is Vantage Hemp? Tell us. So in the US, the, the farm bill is what's really changed everyone's mindset around hemp and, and cannabis in the, in the US. So unlike cannabis, which is sort of state to state, but federally illegal, right. hemp is federally legal and it's going state by state. So we saw a real opportunity to bring forward a, a company and a mindset that's much more science-based and we've been building out a 62,000 square foot uh, facility in Greeley, Colorado. Wow. And really looking at oh, how, to wow. the, yeah, how to do the science better. But I think there's really a, a strong opportunity to do CBD, health and wellness. And you know, even I take my mother, right? 73 year old Indian uh, woman who would never smoke anything. Right. Uh, right. Doesn't drink, doesn't eat meat. And you know, she was actually open to having the conversation around having a CBD cream or a product that she could use for her needs, right? right? Whereas I can never get her to you know, smoke, smoke something. <laughs> so I think what's really exciting is I've been in the seniors uh, space for the last 10 years, and one of the largest growing segments of, of use yeah, of CBD is seniors, I'm so 65 plus. Space myself. Yeah, well, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so I, I think that's quite exciting for the industry where it's going away from you know, the rec side and, and really providing lifestyle choices to people that 10 years ago would never have considered using a CBD or, or cannabis-based product. Right? For sure. So I think that's quite exciting. Yeah, I find it fantastic that the table's open. So um, are you, so so Exhibition Wellness, I'm about to get on a journey of, of wellness. And right. Try, and you mentioned uh, the wellness products and CBD. So um, tell us a little bit about what you're most excited about. We've heard about ointments today. We've heard about, obviously, the oil for years. Right. Um, what are you most excited about? I think it's it's really around the openness of the conversation, right? I mean, it's not a dirty word anymore. It's not about, you know, the California angle. Like, there's always going to be that component, but I, I think the fact that it's going mainstream, like, prime example, a very exciting thing for us at Vantage Hemp, our first employee is a Harvard professor who left his professorship to join us as CSO. Oh, wow. So, so I think, you know, it's exciting for us to have somebody with that much intelligence on our team, but also, it shows to the industry that, hey, when people of that caliber are willing to leave that type of position to come and work in this industry, sure. I think it creates phenomenal legitimacy, right? So there's a lot of those other kids out there in science programs, and right. when you ask them a few years ago, hey, what do you want to do with your life? The kid probably would have said, hey, I'm going to be a scientist in the pharmaceutical industry or this. Now he can look at someone like a Dan and say, well, this is great. You know, I, I could actually work in the cannabis space and, and feel really proud about what I'm doing. Definitely. So, that's for all exciting. the wonders that hemp does. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, what what do you, a um, positive note for 2020, what are you hopeful and excited for? Well, I think just a continued shift globally to, to get away from the stigma of what this all is, right? I mean, really, I think at a phenomenal time in, in really human history, where I think as we talk about hemp and cannabis, you know, people always talk about the gateway. I actually think this is the gateway back to a time when plant-based medicine plant -based was, was medicine, really just a natural part of 
you know, 500 years ago, we wouldn't have even be having this conversation. So it's like, sure. it's like any pendulum, right? It probably swung way too left. Now it swung way too right. And, and now we're back at a place where I think it's a, it's, it's a balance between the pharmaceutical and, and, and the plant-based side. And, and I think that's going to be really good for people. So with the less resistance that hemp has to face, how far of a market are you looking to reach? What I like about the hemp market, or especially the health and wellness side, is that it's kind of unlimited, right? It could be anywhere from that 16-year-old that has some sort of uh, schizophrenic issue, not schizophrenic, um, what am I trying to say? The, An anxiety Yeah, anxiety issue, issue or that concern, right? right? To like that 95-year-old that has anxiety and sleeping or, or you know, for a health and wellness Curious pain. That's why. Like, you know, I think on, on, the, on the recreational use market, that is going to be a smaller market, mm -hmm. right? Just naturally, because of the nature of the products. Not everyone's going to want to vape. Not everyone's going to have a THC type experience. But when you look at CBD, I mean, I think anyone from 16 to 110 is a right. viable client. Right. Mm -hmm. right? And pets and everything. And pets and everything, yeah. yeah. I mean, if I can get my 73-year-old Indian right. mom to actually agree <laughs> to use a CBD cream, you know we're on to something. I mean, this is the most purest woman I've ever known in my life. I, I grew up with Russell Peters. You get, you get, yeah, you get I mean, you know it. I mean, Come on, keep going, keep going. Go but it's that mindset, right? I mean, yeah. if, if that is where we're at, I think in the next five to 10 years are gonna be an incredible time for, for this. Right for this plant and, and just plant-based medicine in general. Where can our listeners find you? They want to hear more, find out more? Well, I, I mean, I'm Instagram, hoping Twitter, yeah, Facebook, Instagram, website, I'm not they? that proud of the Instagram yet. I mean, we're getting there. Oh, that, you got to get <laughs> up. You got to get up. Just like your product is up, my See friend. You you gotta take your coffee. Hey, take I got to focus routine. on building these buildings first because there's no Instagram if I don't get this building up and running. So, Truly, uh, I understand about the building, but you have a bigger message and a the world is on social media. Absolutely. And they Absolutely. need to hear you. They need yeah. to hear you. What's so, your .com? Necessary. Uh, it's vantagehemp.com. Vantage um, but what I'm really hoping for is that, uh, you know, I got to give Dan at least a month to get out of his academic mindset. Yes. And uh, what we're hoping to do is that he would do a monthly podcast or a blog where he can talk about the science of, of, of plant-based medicine. And I mean, this, That's if you go on his LinkedIn it. profile, I can't even pronounce half the words in his publications. <laughs> like I'm like Googling every single word. I'm like, Glycos, I can't even pronounce half this stuff, right? So I think what, what Dan will do for the group is really take that deep science approach and, and just make it more functional and, and understanding for the general consumer. Right? I mean, there cool. isn't research really now like the, the big barrier? Because you could make a case to say if the research was there, then you could justify right. public payers. Right. And so, I mean, what, what's your forecast on the research? I mean, this is a unique it, stereo, right? It's a right? Real big debate. I mean, some people are saying, like, don't even bother. And the thing is, we've never had this experience, right? Because if you go back in time, it's not like I could use an NSAID right. or a Lipitor or one of these medications for a century and then go to the pharmaceutical side. Like, that has never happened. Like, Lipitor has to go through this process to get to a point where it's, you know, for human form. But we've had a situation here where for thousands of years, people have this anecdotal experience. And to me, do we really need to go through the formal pharmaceutical experience? Right. Because anecdotally, we have so much data and that's never happened before with another pharmaceutical product. Right. So so we're kind of in a odd scenario here. Well, we're gonna, because we're of gonna just bust the, that open. We're gonna get all the, the leaders, the, the thought leaders to talk about that and see where we have to go because plain and simple patients can't wait. Yes. And I think what's exciting is just the amount of dollars that are coming into this industry. Yeah. And with those dollars, we will have more innovation. We will have more research. More research. You know, it will become more and more science driven for the medical side. And then I think the rec side will always stay more on that sort of personal experience scenario. But I love I, facts. Yeah. Are, <laughs> we all, are, we are we still leaders? Are we still leaders in Canada? <laughs> I think we are for now. But if, if the regulatory framework doesn't allow for more rapid expansion, because think if all these LPs are now under financial stress, where do they cut the dollars first, right? It would be from these types of research projects and non-core uh, or non-revenue uh, aspects of your business. So I think, you know, imagine what would what would this country look like right now if we had three thousand dispensaries? <laughs> I don't you know. Like, right? Just imagine we, we'd have a very balanced industry in Canada, right? Would we? You know, we would. Three thousand. 3,000 dispensaries across this country oh, that across we're, Canada. where people can get. Now? Like, I mean, BC is is well known to be, you know, the bud capital of How the world. How many do we have now? And we have, what, eight, maybe? Right. 
Right. I mean, that's maybe? so eight per province. That's a huge or, regulatory I mean, you're, you're issue. Maybe you're maybe at eighty or so. I think yeah. MRS is eighty to hundred. Wow. Three. Yeah. That would be pretty nice. Yeah. Actually. So I, I think that is what will keep us ahead. Is that throughput, which will generate more revenue for all the ancillary businesses, and then they can put those dollars towards, you know, more see, more research or more education and, and so forth. But it's fascinating to see. I mean, I'm uh, I'm also involved in the seniors business and just the openness that people have to this product in Plant such a short medicine. but in such a short period of time. But doesn't it go from shut 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 something happens in the family and then wide open right right and it's that fast right and that's what we're trying to do here yeah. is get this information to the masses so that absolutely we can advance and, and accurate information right yeah. i mean Definitely. that's well, you're, that's you're what you're people need yeah. so no it's exciting i i don't think i've involved in something that changes at the pace that it changes and just the excitement around the industry yeah some of it's a little crazy and it's dot <laughs> and it's dot comish and i think that needs to kind of you know be a bit more controlled but the industry itself is very robust and uh, I just think there's tremendous opportunity for people who can persevere and, and see this through. Well, we uh, need to bring more of those people right here to this like-minded table, <laughs> the green room. <laughs> the green um, room. No, it's fantastic to, to hear and see what you're, uh, you're doing. Exciting times. Definitely. For our grandparents. <laughs> yeah, no yeah. Joke. For uh, our grandchildren. Uh, yes, exactly. Right? I have the same similar totally. situation. I, I grew weed for the first time ever, you even had a conversation with my mom. Right, some, right. It's phenomenal, phenomenal. Experience. Well, and I, even our farmer network, you know, we had some exceptional, we planted 800 acres of, of hemp this past year and just working with these farmers and, and, and really seeing how they see this as a, a phenomenal opportunity for them to diversify from some of the other agricultural things they've been doing, you know, and it's pretty cool to meet with a 70 year old guy that's been growing canola or whatever for mm -hmm. 40 years and now he's planted 50 acres of hemp. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. That, that's a pretty yeah. cool conversation. So we, we haven't yeah. we haven't we, we haven't gone there yet on the hemp <laughs> conversation here on the show so um, this year was used I'm hearing more so for a test uh, on outdoor hemp cultivation. No I, I think what happened is a lot of people jumped into growing hemp without knowing the full understanding of supply chain. So I think where people got themselves in trouble is they grew 50, 60, 70 acres, but they had nobody to buy it. So right. they, ju they just assumed, uh, you know, plant it and I will be able to sell it. Right. And so I think that's where it's been unfortunate for the some of the farmers where they they didn't have enough of a robust model and they got themselves in a bit of trouble. But what I think what will happen is you'll have a contraction in the number of people farming, but then they will farm more acreage, which is right. probably going to result in, in better uh, agricultural practice. I like well, it. You're so funny. No, I do. Is the I... future, man. It is. Well, so, I mean, so, but, but it kind of is, right? So we talk about affordability issues here in Canada. For right. I mean, our, our patients keep telling us this, so we're going to keep mentioning it. But um, from a from an affordability perspective, don't we need outdoor hemp cultivation and process in Canada, or and or imports? Definitely, I think overall, what you'll see is like any balanced global sector. You have, for instance, I'm an ex-pharmaceutical guy as well, and you know we bought most of our active pharmaceutical ingredient API from other countries, and then we put it into medicine and, and so forth. So I think as as the global sort of world world view switches, you will start to see more of a balanced approach on on which sector uh, you know the cannabis uh, industry will follow. You know, is it going to be like the the car sector? Is it going to be like tech where everything's offshore? I don't know if anyone has the answer, but I think it would be very foolish to think that everyone's going to be an island forever, right? That it just it doesn't work in any other industry. Why would it work here? Right. Right. So we expect a lot out of this industry that we don't expect out of others. Actually, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. And, and I think that's the biggest challenge is that no one knows which path this will follow, and the people that think they know, I think they're the scariest ones because they don't. They probably know the least. Sure. Right. Yeah. So, well said, Harv. Well said, Major. I'm good. I love it. <laughs> Guys, you know it. Where cannabis talk is always fresh and a little bit sticky. Keep it locked to Cannabis Wiki, the green room. And we're out. Thank you.